What's going on everybody? Metaverse Josh here. Today I've got episode 5 of Building the Metaverse for you all. In this episode we're going to be talking a little bit more about avatars. In the last episode I showed you how to rig your avatar and get it ready for uploading. This week I'm going to show you how to actually get that uploaded as well as go over a few of the additional steps that Spatial added to the SDK when it went live. A couple of those things being that we have to add a transparent thumbnail to our model and I'll show you how to do that. And there's also a category that you can choose from when uploading your model. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to add a character to our scene. We're going to upload it as a global avatar and then I'm going to show you how to add it as an interactable that other users can interact with when they join your world and then they can turn into that avatar as well. Um, so the first thing that we'll want to do, um, and I again, I like to try to keep my uh, folder structure here a little clean. I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm just going to call this characters. So that way, if I decide I want to add any more characters to my scene, I can keep them all inside this folder. I've already got a character downloaded and rigged. If you don't know how to rig your model, then go back and watch episode four of Building the Metaverse. I'll show you how to rig your model and get it ready for uploading. Once you have your character model rigged, um, then we're going to be at the step. So I'm going to just name mine uh, Suitman because the character that I have is actually just a guy in a suit. So we're going to go to my documents folder here and it's Suitman. I'm just going to drag all of the uh, files for Suitman into this folder that I just made inside my project. So it'll show up in here. Now I've got a model and I've got my texture files. So the first thing I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to go to Materials, Export My Materials. I've just got the one, and then I want to go to Rig, make sure it's humanoid for the animation type, and then hit Apply. Now I'm going to drag the character into the scene. And you'll see that right away I don't actually have uh, the textures applied to the model here, so I'm just going to go to the material. I'm going to add my textures really quickly. And now I have my character model that's uh, ready to go. So right now it's not actually an avatar or anything. We're going to go over the steps to go ahead and get that uploaded. We're going to select the model that we just put into the scene here. Uh, and then first, you know, I'm actually going to go on to the material here. I'm going to slide this down because the uh, smoothness is kind of high there. Uh, but I'm going to go back to the model. I've kind of got it the way I want it to look now. I'm not going to make any changes other than that. Um, I want to add the spatial avatar component. Then I want to drag from my scene into the project and I want to create a prefab variant. That's going to give me a prefab variant of the model that I have with all the changes that I wanted to make. I didn't make any other than the, uh, the smoothness there, but it's ready to go. So at this point, what I want to do, I want to go to my project uh, configuration here for the spatial SDK. And I want to change this by going to Avatar, under Create New, the Create. I'm just going to name him Suitman. I'm going to drag my prefab into the prefab slot here. I want it to be global. I'm going to choose Human as the category. That's something they added. And then Thumbnail. This is where you have to create a, uh, a transparent thumbnail. And I'm going to attempt to do that here. And what I like to do is I just, I'm going to grab the snipping tool here grab a screen grab of my model in the scene. I'm just going to save it to uh, my project folder here under Suitman. Go back to the snipping tool there. And I'm just going to name that Suitman. Close that. There it is. So next, I'm just going to go to this website I found uh, when Googling. It's, uh, it's a free website, remove.bg. You can upload your screenshot here. This will attempt to automatically remove any of the background. It's not perfect as you can see, but it'll do good enough for what we want. And the last piece of this is you'll want to edit this with Photoshop or whatever other program that you have that will uh, edit the photo and maintain the transparency. So the thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to size this so that it is exactly 1024 by 1024 resolution. It may stretch it a little bit, that's fine, but it's going to meet the requirements for what we want. 
Um, and so I'm going to go to image size here. I'm going to change this to 1024 by 1024. And that's going to give me a transparent photo uh, the size that I need it. And so last, I'm going to export that. Um, let me go back here. It's actually a different project. Classroom, assets, character, suit name. Okay. Now I've got my transparent preview. So I'm going to go back to the project. And now that we have that image saved in here, we can move it to the thumbnail field. And now we have everything we need to test this. So I'm going to hit the test button and I'm going to get an error. And I noticed because I've actually got uh, the camera and the lights um, from the, uh, the original model still in here. So I need to clean this up a bit before I'm ready. So let's go back to the prefab. We're going to hit unpack here, uh, prefab unpack. And we're going to get rid of the camera and we're going to get rid of the light. So now we're just left with the model and the rig. So last, I'm actually going to just delete the prefab that we made earlier since I'm not going to use that one. And I'm going to remake it by dragging it back into this project uh, folder here. And so now I have my prefab. I'm going to go back to the settings and I'm going to replace it with a new one. I'm going to hit test again. And this time it should load up into, the, into a blank scene where I can test this model, see how it moves around, and if I'm happy with it, I can publish it. And now that I'm loaded into the sandbox, I've got the character that I uploaded. Uh, simple guy in a suit, seems to work. He can run, jump, and I can do a few dances. Seems to work well. So I'm gonna close the sandbox, and I'm gonna go back to my scene. Now that I know the character is good, I'm gonna hit publish. Now what this is going to do, it's going to upload all of my files to spatial servers and it's going to create an SKU uh, for this package. Now I have a, a actual avatar SKU, I can use it in the scene. So let's go back and this time, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click into the hierarchy here. I'm going to hit spatial and then I'm going to go to interactable. This is going to add an interactable object into my scene. If I double click it, it'll take me to where it is. And I don't want it there. I'm actually going to move it um, by clicking the move tool up here. I'm going to move the interactable uh, over closer to the, the character. Now let me explain a little bit about what you're seeing here. Uh, I'm actually going to move this. Uh, just close it for now. There. And so what, what you're seeing here, you can see the interactable object kind of on the floor. We're going to move it to where it's right in the center of the model and then I'm going to raise it up and the reason why I'm doing that is because wherever the interactable is you're going to see a message uh, whenever you're in the game uh, that will display the, uh, the the title of whatever the interactable object is and we don't want that to be clipping through the body we actually want that to be hovering over the head or it can be to the side or, or whatever you choose um, but now that we've got it I'm going to click the interactable I'm going to go back to the inspector and if you can see here the interact text is what is going to show on the button. And so right now I'm just going to rename this to Suitman and, and all that means is it's just gonna show uh, a label above his head with his name uh, so that when you interact with it, it, it can turn you into him. So for right now, we're actually not going to use the interactable to do anything, but the reason why I like to use this, this, uh, this component object is because I can decide, uh, if I do decide I want to use the interactable uh, portion of this later, it's already set up for me and I don't have to replace the object. Um, so now that I've got the interactable, I'm going to move it in, in the hierarchy here close to the man in the suit. I'm going to hold shift and click the man in the suit. So that's going to give me both selected. I'm going to right click it and now I'm going to create an empty parent. And what this is going to do is create just an empty object where both of these are underneath it. So if I click this and then I want to move it, I can move both together. And so now I have my uh, character in the scene and I have an interactable object that doesn't do anything yet. But that's okay because I'm going to teach you how to do something with it now. So what we're going to want to do is go to Add Component, search for Script Machine, and then once we have the Script Machine here you'll see that we don't have any scripts selected yet. So we're going to hit New. And then we don't have a script folder, so I like to go ahead and make one. So in here I'm going to make a folder. 
I'm going to call it Visual Scripts. And I'm going to call this one Suitman. So now I have a script called Suitman inside this, in the Visual Scripts folder, and it's assigned to this interactable. It doesn't do anything yet because we haven't programmed it to do anything yet. So now we're going to want to do is double click the suit man script and it'll open up this window. Now we don't need these two components here so I'm just going to delete them by clicking them and hitting delete key. Then we're going to right click. We're going to start with adding the spatial on interact component. So now what that's going to do is give me uh, a chance to start with the interact function. What this means when you're looking at this this is what we're going to target and it, all that means is that it is applied to whatever we put the script on which in this case is the interact component in our scene. Um, so next we're going to want to add a new piece to this and this is going to be the action that we want to happen. So when we interact with the object we want this to happen. So the next piece is going to be the spatial set local avatar. And now that I have that piece set, I'm going to connect the two by drawing, clicking the green arrow here and drawing a line to the other green arrow on this piece. So now they're connected. So when someone interacts with the object that this script is connected to, they're going to set their local avatar to and then whatever this SKU is. So next, I'm going to want to go back into my project. I can close the script for now. I'm going to go into the settings for my project the spatial settings here. I'm going to I'm going to copy the SKU from earlier from this avatar. I'm going to go back into my script. Then I'm going to click this red dot next to skew. I'm going to just bring it down here and click again. And that's going to give me some choices that I can choose from. I'm going to choose string literal and then I'm going to paste that SKU in there. Now I'm finished. I can close this. If I go back to interactive, I can see that that script is tied to the interactable object which means when I click it the script will execute and it should turn me into that character so the last piece of this is I'm gonna save my scene I'm gonna go back into the settings here I need to change my active package back from suit man to my classroom and then hit test this should load up my classroom with my character in the scene into the sandbox so I can test it out. Okay, great. Here we are loaded into the sandbox and I'm going to walk up to my character. You can see I have the uh, the suit man label. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. You can see the suit man label right above his head. It says I can press F and if I press F then I'm turned into his avatar and now this lasts for as long as I am in this world. If I leave I go back to whatever avatar I had, but this allows you to create, uh, you know, interactable objects in your scene that will change the avatar of the people who are uh, sort of enjoying it at the moment. So, so really quickly, what we're going to do is we're going to go over what we did here. We added this model to our scene and we created a prefab for it. We uploaded it to Spatial and got our SKU assigned. We added this interactable object. We wrote a script and attached it to the interactable object. And the script simply says when this, this being the interactable object since we attached it to it, when this is interacted with um, on interact, then we set the local avatar to, and then the SKU being the string of the avatar that we uploaded. Now, what that means is here, at this point, we could copy it and paste this script into here and just simply replace the SKU anytime we want to add different types of avatars to our scene that we want to be able to change to. So that's one thing that you can do on your own. And then the other thing is, since we do have an interactable uh, here, we can change any piece of this interactable to do something else if we wanted to. So if you also wanted to have a, a sound play uh, on interact, then you could add that um, or any type of animation or something like that. Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot more that you can do at this point, but this is the basic idea of how to make an avatar changer. So I hope this uh, taught you a little bit about visual scripting and how to add characters and, and custom avatars to your scene. 
You can do a whole lot more with it uh, than just what I've shown you here, but this is the basics, and I'm, I hope that is enough to get you started. Until next time, everybody, this has been Metaverse Josh with episode five of Building the Metaverse. Thanks for watching.